Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and once again, I thought I'd go ahead and do a do a D and D Beyond video. So, just gonna gonna press on with my uh, with the character I'm currently working on. Uh, it's gonna be a half orc monk, and um and also like usual, I'm gonna have some uh, music running in the background. Uh, this time around, it's gonna be from a band called Ovasang, and they're I think they're classified as neo folk. I think that's what it is. Um, this music here is primarily going to be, uh, I, I, I call it electroacoustic guitar. Like, it's basically just one instrument and maybe them, maybe them going, oh, ah, ee, ha, oh, or, you know, like in various parts throughout the album. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like playing the, uh, the album I played during my cast video that I did a few hours ago. Wasn't really in the mood to play it here. Um, just looked at a bunch of other albums I got. I nothing, nothing really struck me. So, looking at my uh, YouTube recommendations, nothing really there except for this album here. Um, I played it before in uh, in, in other uh, in other videos. So, so yeah, and I had a I had to do a copyright check on it since it's been probably about six months since I played this album. So. I figured there probably would have been a chance it might have gotten copyrighted or might have been might have gotten added as part of uh, the Epidemic Sounds library. So, but no, it checked out. So, let me go ahead and get that fired up. All right. Okay. So, and I'm gonna try to keep this under 30 minutes. So, hopefully, hopefully I can. So, but anyway, um, so uh, as far as the uh, rules go, I think previously, yeah, I ended at uh, classes, and again, the class I'm going with is monk. So, we're at personality and background, character details and stuff, but um. Um, one thing I do need to talk about, though, um, the monk, you kind of, you kind of already have an idea as how they work, you, you know, it's all over the damn place in pop culture, you know, they're basically, they're kind of like, kind of like Ryu, or Ryu of Street Fighter, uh, kind of like Bruce Lee, you know, that kind of thing, just, uh, or if you've ever seen the movie, the, what is it? The 36 Chambers of Shaolin or something like that. I mean, that movie, so. Um. So Magic of Key, I'm sure the term you guys are already familiar with. You know, Key Energy. You know, it'd be like Street Fighter, Ryu shooting those Hadoukens, or the Shaolin! You know, uppercut, that kind of stuff, so. Um, training in. If you ever watched the old school movie, the old school uh, show Kung Fu, you know, uh, was it Robert Carradine or David Carradine? I can't remember which one. So, but like, but um, but yeah, I've got a. I think there's a. Creating a monk. Here it is. As you make your monk character, um. Uh, I'll probably talk more about it later, but uh, the character is a half orc. His mom's a human. His dad's an orc. Or hell, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll really, really, really defy tradition and make uh, make it a a human. You know, his dad's a human. His mom's an orc. But like I said, it's probably a detail I'll probably go into later. But like I said, I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes. Hopefully. So, but, yeah, um, but both of them are soldiers. Um, their village slash city or whatever was, um, was attacked by a beholder. Um, but, uh, for those, and for those that don't know what a beholder is, he's pretty much the big icon of, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, uh, mouth, big old eyeball, and like, 
ten different li ten little little eyeballs. But uh, yeah. Which I kind of defy tradition on this one here. You're supposed to make the dexterity the highest ability, followed by wisdom. Um, I kind of broke from tradition and went with uh, I think wisdom. Wisdom was the was the highest, followed by intelligence, then dexterity. Yeah, mo but most of this is. Yeah, I think I said this before. Normally, when you're unarmored, it's just ten plus your dexterity modifier. But for a monk, your a wisdom modifier gets thrown in there as well. So yeah, basically, you can do... You can, for the most part, do all the things that a regular fighter could do just without the weapons. Flurry of Blows. That's a pretty big G component of the monk. And uh, as we go down, you'll, I'll show you some more, uh, some more stuff. Uh, step on the wind. I think you just move faster. Patient defense. You, it just ups your defense. Um, the monk class, they get uh, key points. There, I'm sure there's probably a table around here somewhere. It shows uh, how much key, how many key points you get per level. Um, in order to, in order to restore those key points, you have to take either a short rest or a long one. That I think is, I know it's new to fifth edition. I've never seen it before in first or second edition. I don't think it was even in a uh, third edition. It was, uh, you either slept, it would, or you either slept or didn't. I think that was how the mechanics worked in those older editions. In this one here, there's two types. A short rest and a long rest. I'm guessing a long rest is uh, eight hours. A short rest, I would think would be four hours, but I don't know. So, yeah. Oh. And then you'll probably see this every so often. I think I probably said this in one of my, one of my uh, earlier vids. Whenever you're... First, I hope you guys are able to see this. Yeah, I, I can't really tell without switching windows. But yeah, um, whenever you... Whenever, um... Whenever you see any role is made, like, with advantage... Or with disadvantage and um basically what that means is uh if you have advantage that means you roll two 20-sided dice and you keep the better of the two results if you have disadvantage same thing you roll two 20-sided dice but you're going to keep the worst of the two the two rolls Basically, yeah, it doubles your speed. Disengage. Yeah, so if you're if you're in the middle of fighting, um, if you normally if you try to back out of combat, they get a free hit on you. But uh, if you take the disengage the disengage action, it won't that won't happen. You'll just back off. Yeah, and you. Start at second level, you move faster. Um, and this here was the big one I wanted to talk about. Uh, monastic tradition, yesterday. Yesterday, one of my favorite things about D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, yeah, you can, uh, you can buy the online books, like the full physical copies. You can even do the same thing with online as well. Or, you, if, you can just simply buy a chapter. You can buy a chapter off the uh, 
the online version, which is great for me because I don't, on some of these, uh, these books, especially some of these expansion books, I don't really care for 90% of the book. I just want just one little chapter. That's what happened yesterday. Um, we'll probably get down here eventually, but um, I purchased Way of Mercy. This is the um, this is the monastic tradition that I'm interested in, but uh, it's not it's not actually part of the basic guide here. I had to actually purchase it for like a buck ninety nine. So, but like I said, that's one of the things I like about D&D Beyond. I can't recall ever seeing it in any other website that does this. You don't have you don't have to buy the whole entire book at once. You can just buy like a particular chapter or a little section of it. That's what I did here. But the problem was, is uh, I was looking around the website for it. I bought it. it. It even showed that I own it, but I didn't really know where to look. I figured, I looked on my account page. I figured it would have, it would have been in there, and you know, figured it would have, there would have been a link to it, and click it, and there I go. But nope. All it showed me was the purchase receipt. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another drink here. nothing. Either you deflect it or avoid it entirely, or you take the full brunt of damage of it. Not anymore. The damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10. That's the 10-sided dice, plus your dexterity mod modifier, plus your monk level. And if it reduces it to zero, you can actually catch it. If, it, if it's small enough. Like if it's, if it's a simple arrow, you can catch that in one hand. So like I said, if you reduce it to if you reduce it to zero, you'll actually catch it. Then uh, you can um, you can throw it back. Yeah, in the uh, first and second second editions, I don't. I don't think they have this mechanic. Like when you reach a uh, fourth, eighth, twelfth, sixteenth, nineteenth, you can uh, increase one ability score of your choice by two, or you can raise two ability scores by one. And um, like uh, in in the first and second editions, the only the only way to increase your attributes were by magic items. Or by uh, by some other special means, you know, you know, like if you if you trained in stone masonry or something like that, or if you worked in a mine or something, you know, it had to be something like super special. Like it did the the actual mechanic didn't really exist, but it does in fifth edition. I think it might have in third edition. I can't remember. Uh, you can reduce uh, fall damage, beginning at fourth level, which means equal to five times your monk level. So, so at fourth level, um, falls of uh, 20 feet or less won't won't, won't hurt you. Uh, fifth attack, you get a you get an extra attack. Stunning strike. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, stun creature. Incapacitating. Can't move. And again, any attacks against a stun creature have advantage. Once again, that means uh, you're rolling two 20-sided dice. And then you're keeping the better of the two results. And then this is something else, too, that's a little different. Um, I know in the first two editions, maybe the third edition as well, Count as Magical for the purpose of overcoming the 
substances. It used to be uh, magic had a it had a levels like plus one say a plus one dagger means plus one magic you know plus two plus three all the way up to plus five I want to say and um mon some monsters like powerful undead um I'd probably say like like powerful magical creatures you couldn't hurt them unless your weapon was like at least plus three was like plus three magic but I think it seems what they did here in a fifth edition is it's either magical or it isn't. So it looks like they streamlined it. It's either magical or not. Yeah, at six, and uh, your your speed bonus again, you move up, you move faster than most people. Less, uh, you, let's take eight. You take less AOE damage. Normally, you you roll uh, you roll your dexterity to avoid, like, say, uh, a fireball spell. Uh, you, <sighs> yeah, you, you only take half damage. Or if you make the roll, if you're roll succeeds, you don't take any damage, but if you fail, you only take half damage. Tongue of the sun and sun and moon. Yeah, I. This is another uh, ability I was uh, kind of interested in. Thirteenth level, you learn to touch the key of other. Yep. You... Okay, so this actually does go two ways. Uh, two ways that uh, I knew. Uh, here, you can understand all all languages, but I, I didn't know if you could actually speak that language. But apparently, apparently you can. Any creature that can understand a language can understand what you say. So it means uh it means I can talk to R2D2. So um Okay, this one here is a little bit on the uh Infinity plus one side. I mean, by the time you even get to 15th level, you're probably so damn old anyway that this ain't gonna matter much. Yeah. Yeah, you can still you can still die of old age. But I mean, like I said, by the time you even get 15th level, you're gonna be so damn old anyway that this really ain't gonna matter much. That's kind of cool, though. You no longer need food or water. Okay. Good thing I read this. So I'm guessing by this, any old age effects that are already on you, like I like I said, by the time you get 15th level, you're gonna probably probably gonna be an old man anyway. Um, I'm also guessing that uh, and like I said, any of the uh, aging effects that are already on you are gonna fall off. At least that's what I'm assuming. Like I said, yeah, you're pretty quick at that point. 20th level when you roll for initiative and have it Oh! Uh. 
I wouldn't know. Uh, first off, I'd have to live to see 20th level. When you roll for initiative. And I, I could see you all having, but by the time you get 20th level, you're gonna have so damn many key points that you probably, I would think you'd probably have more points than what you know, than you know what to do with. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm just in the creation process, so I wouldn't. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This, this is what I paid a buck ninety nine for. But like I said, I, when I got it, I didn't know where it was. I kept looking on my account page, you know, showing where all my, per, you know, all my purchases and stuff, and all it showed there was a receipt. So after that, I had no idea where to look. I just came over here on a whim and poof. There it was. So, all right, way of mercy. Learn to manipulate the life force of others. Basically, to bring aid to those in need. So, um, if you're familiar with the game uh, Final Fantasy Tactics at all, way of mercy is basically the monk class in Final Fantasy Tactics. You know, they got their... They got their punches and kicks and all that, but um, they could also heal too. They could heal. They can um, they can remove most ailments from a, from an ally. And I didn't think they had this until I actually um, I went ahead and looked them up. But they could revive people too. They could revive dead people. I didn't know that. I figured uh, I figured I would probably would have made them too powerful. But granted. Um, their heals aren't as effective as a full-blown healer. And, um... And I think, uh, if they re when they revive targets, they revive with only, like, one or two health. So, you're gonna have... You'd either have to wait until your next turn to heal them up, or there has to be another healer but nearby to heal them up. So... Yep. Wandering physicians to the poor and hurt. And this kind of goes in line with um, why um, if it's possible to do it in this game, um, I wanted to be a, a worshiper of El Bader. Uh, he's the, the god of endurance, martyrdom, suffering, etc. This is a this is also a key component of uh, of their of his clergy or his church. I think I guess uh a lot of his temples also have infirmaries. You know, sick bay, um, like many hospitals, that kind of thing. They uh, treat the sick and stuff. So it's also where the, if I'm guessing right, it's also where the plague doctor aspect comes in too. I, I guess, uh, I think of plague doctors. I mean, doctor, it's in their name, so they can also heal people as well. So I'm gonna take another drink. I just saw this. And if I wasn't recording this video right now, I, I would have went right by this. They bring a swift end as an act of mercy. So these guys are almost like, um, like, like Dr. Jack Kevorkian. Like, they can euthanize people. Yeah. Follow the way of mercy might be members of a religious order ministry of needy making grim choices rooted in reality rather than idealism. Some might be gentle voiced healers, beloved by their communities, while others might be mass bringers of macabre mercies. Yeah. Fucking. Jack Kevorkian right here. But, um, one of the reasons why I'm really so into this is, um, one of my, um, uh, oh, let me, uh, um, 
one of my favorite books that I used to love reading as a kid uh, were uh, first aid books. I just, to this day, I still think it's gotta be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You know, like when uh, when someone gets injured, you know, somebody, you know, somebody runs up with, you know, with a splint cast or, you know, help, you know, finds a, uh, like, like a paramedic. You know, to me, one of the, uh, one of the unsung heroes of, you know, of the world. You know, they kind of straddle that line between life and death. They're part of us. They're this slice of life that you don't, that you, most people basically take for granted. I mean, I've had a, one, one experience that definitely stood out, my uh, brother-in-law, um, his uh, wife was going to divorce him. You know, my, my sister was gone. Uh, she had divorce papers and everything, and he kind of got bent out of shape and had a stress-related heart attack. So he's just kind of laying here on the, just, <laughs> just wheezing away and grabbing his chest and laying on the ground, you know, called 911 and stuff, and then, you know, the, para the paramedics pulled up, and I can't remember what they did, but they were trying, you know, I think they probably gave him, like, nitroglycerin or something like that, put it under his tongue, that kind of, you know, helped him up, and they, you know, got him back up and running. You know, it's fucking cool as shit seeing stuff like that. I, you know, he classifies me, probably classifies me as a weirdo, if you, assuming you never thought that, but anyway, you know, but, but you know, like I said, it's just, it's really cool as hell watching stuff like that. You know, I even took a, I took a first aid class. Um, I got, you know, uh, paid a hundred bucks, got the card, and I'm pretty long overdue for uh, taking another class. But like I said, uh, I, especially with me working part time, I can't really afford the hundred dollar expense. Plus, even then. Even if I actually did get, you know, get a first aid certified, and if somebody actually was, you know, like, collapsed on the floor, I'd be scared shitless. You know, I got, you know, it, it would be worse for me because I'm actually armed with the knowledge to do something, but it's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you know, would have been a different matter if I knew nothing about first aid. You know, let somebody go, hey, there's a guy collapsed on the floor. Okay, I gotta keep shopping. See ya. Good luck. You know. So yeah, I love this kind of stuff. So like I said, but that's one of the reasons why I'm so I'm so invested in this this uh, version of the monk. I think there were uh, other reasons too, but that's just the first one that comes to mind. I think part of this, I think I probably have to look deeper into this, but uh. Monk is uh, actually considered one of the worst classes out there. Like, I guess they're, like, really unpopular. But, uh, I... Last I heard, uh, Way of Mercy is probably, is, last I, last I checked, it was considered the best way or one of the worst classes, the Way of Mercy. But like I said too, um, this is this one here. It's very much a uh, part of uh, Ill Mater's portfolio. The walkers of this way usually don't close it. I don't really know what this means. Ropes with deep cowls, like big, heavy, thick ropes. Uh, and they often conceal their faces with masks. And this was something else too. Um, I saw a picture of this. Um, he was wearing a, the standard, you know, plain doctor mask with a big old beak and stuff. Presenting themselves as the baseless bringers of life and death. Yup. Yeah, and this pretty much sealed it for me right here. Um, less... Less so, but it's a good ability to have. Being able to tell what, you know, being able to tell what people are thinking or just by looking at them. 
why they're not so much trying to bullshit you. Ah, uh, medicine lets you try to stay alive as a dying companion or die. This, this is first aid right here. And you got the herbalism kit that makes that possible. Yeah, first aid, and this is the first aid kit right here. You also gain a special mask, which you often wear when using the features of the subclass. You determine its appearance. This is my part right here. You determine its appearance. And, um, in case I didn't say earlier, my mask is going to be a beholder mask. Now, originally, I was... Originally, I wanted it to be uh, just a straight-up eyeball mask. That was my first idea. Kind of a, a reference to my all-time favorite band. The residents, but after after envisioning after envisioning this kind of mask on them, it would look almost comical, like too silly. Plus, I keep thinking that uh, I keep thinking that eventually I'm probably gonna cease and desist from the band themselves. You know, hey, you can't you can't wear that mask unless you pay a licensing fee or you know that kind of thing. So I figured uh, behold, it would be a good alternative, but um. It, it's got to be a certain certain kind, like a beholder that's like almost all eyeball and very little mouth. I'm guessing that's the uh, plague doctor mask, the, again with the big old beak. Black and white crying, laughing. Okay, but um, yeah, but starting at third level, again, this is just like the monk from Final Fantasy Tactics. They could uh, heal others. So I'm gonna take another drink. And then this is why um, I said earlier, Flurry of Blows is pretty Im pretty important for this class because when you use this, you can use uh, one of your extra attacks with uh, for healing. Place one of the armor on our strikes. So, if I'm reading this correctly, if you use a healing ability with your Flurry of Blows, you can do it for free. If I'm reading this right. And then uh, you have the flip side here, too. You can also, uh, if you smack somebody, you can spend a key point and you'll deal necrotic damage. Uh, I wonder if that's like uh, acid damage. Like, uh, it deals regular damage, but it also reduces your max health, your maximum hit points too by the same amount. Yep. Physician's touch. Yep. Again, this is uh the monks in Final Fantasy Tactics can do this too. They can uh they can relieve ailments. Yes, the creature is a critical hit. Presumably that means you deal double damage and Oh, here's a here's a different way of doing this. I think uh all other poison attacks that I saw just basically dealt straight up additional damage over time. On attack rolls and ability checks. So once again, um, when a, when somebody has a has disadvantage, that means uh, you 
you're rolling two 20-sided dice, not just one, and you're taking the worst of the two results. You can subject it to the poison condition. Okay, yep. Flurry of... Yeah, here it is. You know, you know, the flurry of comfort and her when you flurry of blows, you know. Each of the hard arm strikes. That's kind of weird. Like, you can do all this for free. When you make an hard arm strike. Hand of arm once per turn. Okay, so hand of arm. Strike a player of blows, you can use hand of arm with that strike as well. Okay, so. So you only have one single use, so you can only use one single. You can only use it for one single attack. Ultimate Mercy. Yup. Look, yep, you can revive. You gotta spend uh, five key points in order to do it. The creature then returns to life, getting a number of hit points. Oh! But you also have to be uh, level 17 in order to do it. Duh. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to go through this fairly quickly, cause yeah, I gotta shut, I gotta shut down here real soon. Uh, name, I'll, I'll probably decide that later. He's definitely gonna be male. What's the link for? Well, um, but yeah, he's gonna be male. Let's see, half orc ain't even in here. But uh, I think half orcs are taller than humans. I wonder where my dice went. I used to have a dice over here in the lower left corner. Yeah, I used to have a... I used to have dice over here in the lower left corner. I wonder what happened to them. So, but anyway, um, here, let me, uh, I'll go ahead and go on Google, and I'll just do it on here. Dice roller. Come on, tactical tokens. Hopefully I don't get an anti-ad blocker ad. Okay, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna... Let's see here. But, um... I'm gonna... Excuse me, but again, half orcs are taller than humans. So I'll just say five foot. And then roll a two ten-sided dice. So I got a total of nine. So five foot nine. Yeah. Yeah, well, my half orc is basically, I think his strength is 12, so he's a little bit above average. Um, age, probably, uh, I'd probably say mid to late teens, maybe even their early 20s. Act. Let me, uh, scroll up. Uh, let me go to my character. Uh, 
description. Yeah, I picked a haunted one. Um, again, they're up. Uh, I think um, his parents, his parents, the village or city or whatever that they live in, was attacked by a beholder. And then um, after um. Uh, after my character seeing this, he just see how fucked up it looked and saw all the eyeballs staring at him and stuff like that. He became a haunted one. So, kind of a dramatic event. I think I did this yesterday. So, alignment, lawful good. Spoiler for this, but uh, if you ever seen the movie One Hour Photo with Robin Williams, his uh, his uh, his big uh, film developing fetish, his big photography fetish, came from uh, tragic events as a child. So not because he thought it was a great career for him or anything like that. So it was just the result of trauma. So kind of the same thing why he wears the uh, older mask. Okay, yep. Yep. This is the uh This is uh, influenced by Henry Rollins right here. Dr. Spears can see. As a real life schizophrenic, I go, I go, I go through this every day. So Um, okay, so they're gonna talk about equipment here, and I could probably do a whole, I could probably do a whole video just on equipment, but I'll choose equipment or global starting equipment. Um, but yeah, um, okay, I remember this. Haunted monster ring equipment. Ooh, 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 ooh. A set of common clothes. Oh, this is interesting. But yeah, this looks like something that um I probably have to I probably uh Hey there's my dice. Yeah, there it was.
So it looks like this is only available during our character creation. So we got 12. So let me go back. So that uh, makes them a little bit taller. I'll just say an even six foot. Okay, but like I said, I could probably uh I could probably spend a whole video work just working on equipment. And uh that is the in the it is the end of the album. So So I guess now would be a good time to call it good. So but um, I might do some more of this tomorrow. I don't know, but we'll see. But otherwise, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now.